Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV. On today's show, we're headed to Lake James in North Carolina. We're going to do a little bit of late fall and early winter smallmouth and walleye fishing, and hopefully we'll put a few fish in the boat. It's going to be a deep water technique today, so you're not going to want to miss this one. Stick around and don't go away. We'll be right back. Well guys, we're at our spot, and what I'm doing right now is, normally I fish over here on the other side, but, and I, and I haven't fished this side of this, this cove in quite a while. And it's a pretty deep cove in the middle over here, it's around 40 feet, and it comes up pretty quick. So it's a good trough in here. And what I'm doing now is a few places over here where it drops off, it comes way out shoreline and drops off out here so I'm really just kind of check it out a little bit before I set up and fish and just see if there's any fish out here 25 feet uh, depth of water now this is where Eric and I fished uh, back here a few shows ago and got a lot of hits here uh, a lot of fish activity but we couldn't get the fish to come in now I'm only in 13 feet of water right now guys and I'm probably I would say a good hundred feet maybe a I'd say maybe hundred and fifty feet off from shore and it's just starting to drop off now and right now I'm about in the middle of the cove and it's not even maximum depth so it uh, gives the fish a good opportunity in here to seek deep water should they need to because of weather conditions changing weather conditions and also to get up in the shallower water areas during the day in the afternoon when the water temperature warm up. All right, I'm just getting my bait out here at this spot. And I'm going to go ahead and let it down, down to the bottom, move back to where I saw them fish on the depth finder. Now, this technique is a deep water technique, guys. I'm talking, I'm fishing from 30, sometimes 60 feet of water. So you have to fish it differently when you're going to fish this technique, okay? And it's usually a really productive technique in these waters this time of year when the smallmouth and walleye, when they head deep. Now I'm on fish right now. I am sitting right now on a bunch of fish. 39 feet deep and they are pretty much stacked up down there. So we're going to see what happened. I was actually headed to a new spot. It's like a small large mow. Oh yeah. <laughs> Real small large mow. I was headed to another spot. I went down and tried a few other places down there, and um, the fish were there, but it just wasn't paying off. So I was kind of in trolling mode, going to the other spot, and this little guy come along and bit. But what a pretty fish he is! All right, getting back in the water, I get back to where I'm going. But I'm going to tell you, this is not one of the ideal days today that I like to fish in. It's uh, Bluebird skies right now, and 
you know, I'm, I'm going to have to change some things that I do the way I fish today because these are not the ideal conditions. It doesn't mean I'm not going to catch fish, but what you need to do under conditions like this is you need to change. The fish already have it made up in their mind what they're going to do when the weather changes. And that's one reason why I like Lake James because you can predict what the fish are going to do. All right, everybody. Got another fish here. Don't know what it is yet. We're gonna find out. Looks like a small molly. He's coming up pretty quick. Yeah, it is. Let me get my net out here. I don't want to lose him. Yeah. Not a very big one, but we got another small mouth. And, uh, as you can tell, we've changed locations, and the reason for that was, is, I was on fishing the other other spot where I was at, but they just weren't biting the way I thought they should be. Now this ain't a big fish, that's for sure, but we got him. The technique is working. If you look at his gut, he's been feeding, so that's great, and. Um, we hope to get a few more here. I'm on fish really good. I marked a good spot. This here is a place that Eric and I fish. Let me get him back in the water, okay? And I'll talk to you a little bit about where we're at. There he goes. All right, let me talk to you a little bit about where we're at and what we're doing. This is a spot where uh, a few weeks back, me and Eric were fishing at. It's a place we call the trough. And what it is, let me get my bait down here. Like I said, I'm, I'm on fish right now and I want to stay on them. I'm only in 36 feet of water. So what's going on right now is we've got an island over here and I'm really close to another island over here. And this island comes way out and drops down really slow. And if you look on the depth finder right now, I'm showing a lot of fish. And what happens is these fish, they stay in this trough. And as the water warms up, they will transition and move up to both islands and get in the warmer water. So that's what I'm finding is happening right now. Um, these fish are in 36 feet of water. I have a marker behind the boat, and on that marker is a massive amount of bait. But the fish weren't there. They've moved now because it's afternoon. They've moved up just a little bit here uh, uh, in shallower water to get in a little bit better comfort zones, what they're after. So I'm going to work this area. I've got it marked on my GPS. I'm going to stay in this spot for a little bit. See if I can't get some of these fish to cooperate a little bit and get another one in the boat. And uh, maybe we'll get a little bit bigger smallmouth than that last one. But the main thing today is uh, having a good time. And I'm enjoying it out here. The weather's great. And I got to get back to washing my rods. All right. There's another one. I hope I can stay on these fish this time. This ain't a very big one, but we're going to get him in the boat. Oh, maybe I got another one. Nope. Might be a catfish. I'll bet this is another darn catfish. Sure feels like it. Pulling out the drag. It's gonna be a catfish day, I guess. Huh. Come on, come on. Get up here. Oh, no, I don't know what that is. Not a catfish. Boy, it's a nice smallmouth. Get my net. Get him here in the boat. There we go. All right. Come on here, Mr. Fish. And a little bit better than the last one. Let me get this thing under control. I don't want to lose my spot. I'm sure marking fish down there really good right now. Right around the buoy, it seems to be like. So I hope this, uh, we're not getting too backlit. I know the sun's right in the wrong place, but well, there's another smallmouth, everybody. I'm still in the same spot. Uh, most of the fish, what I found, like I said earlier, they're all kind of moving up a little bit on the hump. This one come out about 35 feet of water. 
So, I guess they're coming up to warm up a little bit because I know we have a cold front coming in toward the weekend, and this is uh, Wednesday, so they may be uh, feeding a little bit and getting ready for that cold front. Let me get you back in the water, okay? didn't take long. Man, I just put that bait out there. Whoa! Gotta be a catfish. Holy smokes. I came onto a school of fish here. Guys, I mean a big school of fish. And I just put this bait out and he just hammered the thing. There's a monster school of, uh, of fish right below me here. Right now I'm in 32 feet of water. I just come off from that place where me and Eric fish, what we call the trough. Um, they were there, but they weren't really that active. And uh, this is a catfish. Because he's not wanting to come up. Boy, he's peeling off the drag though. Man, I'm gonna lose my spot here. I got it marked on the GPS. Oh, what a small mouth. Big small mouth. It wasn't a catfish. It was a big small mouth, guys. Oh, gosh. Wait, do you see this fish? And this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about Lake Erie quality fish, uh, small mouth bass in Lake James. And that's, that's one of them right there. Beautiful, beautiful, probably four and a half, maybe pushing five pounds. Uh, Smallmouth bass. And uh, he just hammered it. I sent that bait down there and kabang, he was right on it. Man, that's a nice smallmouth bass. Sure wish Eric was here because he was trying for one of these last week and they just didn't come, but. Anyways, uh, let me get him back in the water, take a few photos here, get him back in the water. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what I'm doing because this is a great spot I'm on. Uh, I'm out of the fish right now. I'm going to turn around and go right back over here and get right back on him. Let me get this guy back in the water. Me, But this lake, you know, can be, to the average person, can be really in intimidating uh, because it's a clear water lake. Um, what I'm doing is I'm tight lining with live bait. Now some of you guys might frown on that, but I'm catching the fish. This is a day where I can tell you right now, you'd work really hard to catch fish on artificials. And there are some days on this lake, artificials work great. There's some days where they don't work at all. And like I always say, I don't care if you're crappy fishing, cat fishing, or what you're doing, have an alternative bait on the boat. You could go home without putting any fish uh, in the boat at all. So anyways, what I'm doing is I'm looking for fish, okay? I'm not um, just going out and parking the boat and throwing my line out. Um, I do have a little bit of advantage, I guess, because I've fished this lake for probably 20 years. And after that length of time, you get to know some of the spots and some of the areas pretty good. So maybe as far as that respect, I have a little bit of advantage. But some of these places I'm trying today are places I haven't found. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm finding some of these places and I'm marking them on my GPS. And once I do that, I'm staying on the fish. I'm not roaming around, uh, getting off track very far or anything like that. I'm finding the fish and I'm staying on them. So... Like I said, this is a live bait technique that I'm doing right now, okay? Uh, fishing anywhere and all my fish guys have come out of 30 to 60 feet of water. Now, that last fish I caught, that was a monster, monster uh, smallmouth bass. Some guys would have never thrown that fish back. But... I speak a lot about Lake Erie quality smallmouth in Lake James, and that's exactly what I mean. Them monsters are in here. Them big smallmouth are in this lake. And you just got to know where to, to look for them and where to find them. 
but anyways find your fish in the winter time these smallmouth and walleyes they're going to seek, seek the deeper deeper they're going to seek the deeper water they're not going to roam okay uh, a, a real warm afternoon they may come out of the bottom like uh, I found them doing on that island that I was just on there around that island they were coming up and they were positioning in shallower water so that's just a case where when it cools back down about five o'clock they're gonna head back down into the deeper water and find a better comfort zone so just remember that you know when you come to a lake like this don't get on brush piles right on top of them because the water is so clear the fish are going to see you and you're going to spook them. You have to fish this lake from a distance. The only reason I'm fishing on top of these fish here is because I'm fishing 30 feet plus water. So just keep that in mind and you'll do a lot better on Lake James. Don't let it intimidate you. It took me a long time. I'm used to fishing clear water lakes. I've done it for probably 40 years of my fishing career. Um, and, and the past 18 to 20 years has been here on Lake James. So don't let it intimidate you. Get out there. Uh, find the drop-offs. Find the, find the places to find the fish. Uh, on the map here, you take a look at the map, and, and one key target area is where you have a trough. And what I mean by a trough is like in a cove or between two islands uh, where the water comes out. Uh, the the, uh, the bottom comes out and it'll come out and drop off fairly slightly sl uh, slow okay and then all of a sudden the bottom will just drop off into a deeper section of water that's what I call a trough and the reason I like them areas is because a lot of times what's going to happen is the bait are going to stay in that trough they're going to stay right in there because that's where they're going to winter at and what happens if you find your bait, you're going to usually find your fish, whether it's smallmouth, walleye, or catfish. I really thought that fish was a catfish, guys. i got to tell you, why he didn't jump, I don't know. But smallmouth are, are, are jumpers. They just jump a lot when you catch them. But, um, so find areas like that where there's troughs, and you'll find the bait. You'll find pockets of bait in them troughs. Your fish won't be very far from them pockets from them pockets of bait so just remember that uh, don't let the lake intimidate you get out here to lake james find these areas and these spots mark them on your gps get on the fish and listen if you're if you are good with artificials jigging or whatever then use that technique 